Were we really shown some cutscenes from this so-called trailer of the new episode? Hello everyone. Recently one of the animators of the amazing Digital Circus showed us some of the cutscenes and so-called behind the scenes, and I was very surprised to see how interesting the new episode was. Let me show you all these scenes and we will analyze and look at each of them together. And the first scene is the very beginning of this trailer. Remember how Pomni is sleeping at first and then Cain brutally wakes up our girl? After that, there was a very interesting conversation between them and just this process of this conversation and showed us one of the animators. That's what I like about such videos, that we can learn the original vision of the author on this or that scene. Is that how that normally works? Shut up! I have so much to show you! Your little crying face left quite the little crying mark on the internet. Even here, we can see that in the original version of the room, Pomni looked quite different than in the final scene. At least we don't see the curtains that partially cover Pomni's bed. And also originally, it was supposed that Pomni would not have one big pillow, but several small ones. The trailer also showed a fragment that was an exact copy of a scene from the pilot episode. I have so much to show you! <laughs> Your little- However, while in the trailer, we see a perfect transition between locations. In the original version, the transition was supposed to be a full-fledged teleportation through the so-called wormhole. This scene reminds me very much of Pomni's journey through the void. And of course, I can't help but mention the digital circus area, which just looks disgusting. But I have an assumption that this animator simply did not bother with the scenery and focused more on the movements of the characters. Imagine if our The Amazing Digital Circus looked like Kevin Temmers. But what I'm most interested in is where the digital circus tent went. And the beautiful meadow instead of the lake also fascinates me a lot. I'm not even talking about the completely eco-friendly amusement park. Not a single mechanical part, just beautiful green plants. I think Greta Thunberg would be very happy. I've talked a lot about Kane's eyes in the original, and I have to admit that I still can't remember why they look so creepy. Another interesting fact is that Kane's costume is supposed to be yellow on the inside. Similarly, the scene we were shown after the presentation of the new characters, the sky in the background was supposed to look very dark, but in the end they decided to do it in the usual digital circus style. And did you pay attention to Kane's hat? In the final version, it looks with a red stripe, but in the process of creation, the authors assumed that the stripe will be blue. And to be honest, the final version looks a hundred times better. Then we were shown the funniest scene of the whole trailer. I think you have already guessed that I am talking about the moment when Kane turns into a stuffed animal. I see. But it's not just our administrator that's interesting in this scene. Take a closer look at the digital circus tent. In addition to the main building, you can see some sort of small annex next to it. But for some reason, the creators decided to remove this building completely and put huge entrance doors in its place. Kane himself and his plush version looks very strange in the original version. Our Kevin looks as if he just took a PNG image and added it when creating the 3D animation and layered it on top of the main version of Kane. But luckily, in the process of creating the final version of the animation, plush Kane was slightly modified and now looks quite appropriate and cute. The great and powerful artificial pet Bubble. What surprised me was that he came right out of Pomni's mouth. Uh, you... How can we support the production of this cool new show? Great question, Pomni. All merch sales go right back into funding the show and allow us to do bigger and crazier things. Wowee! I've become a pen if it meant getting sold to fund more wacky. And in the original scene, he looks too rough, if I may say so. Just compare the original and the final version. In the original version, Bubble represents some blue substance, while in the final version, Bubble looks like a real soap bubble. Look how beautifully his body shimmers in the sunlight. And then we see Kane. Nothing out of the ordinary happens, but it's important to note that I'm once again disturbed by his eyes. Of course they are not as creepy as before, but now they both have blue circles around them, even though we all know that one of Kane's eyes is green. I think this is just a later version of the trailer where a lot of details have been finalized. Not without commercials these days. And it's also in the trailer. And Kevin Temmer was responsible for that as well. Let's compare the posters from the very beginning of the trailer and the posters from the final version of the trailer. First of all, the bubble poster. Video that in the original version of the poster itself is more dim and our bubble has a large size. And I do not understand why the developers decided to reduce it in the final version. In my opinion, the reduced version of the bubble looks much worse than originally intended whereas the Pomni poster did a much better job and all they did was turn our fool around a bit. I'm not even talking about the plush Canes commercial. Now let's talk a little bit about Jax. Based on the previous behind the scenes, I realized that Kevin Temmer is responsible for the most complex animations on this character, and this shot was no exception. But I'm very interested to know what this mysterious fast food restaurant is. 
And using Jax as an example, it is very easy to explain the reason for such a long absence of a new episode. Just compare the original footage and the final version. Of course, such an improvement takes a lot of time and effort. Now let's take a look at some very funny, unfortunate shots that were permanently removed from the trailer of the new episode. And the first scene will be our introduction to the trailer. I can't imagine what happened to Pomni's face, but it's much more interesting to look at Kane's face. Sometimes I get the feeling that the creators are doing this on purpose to amuse us in the future. Kane's return from plush to normal is also accompanied by a weird scene where Kane looks a lot like a robot and it's already very creepy. After watching this video, I think that Kane is definitely a man. Especially after seeing how sensual he dances, I had my doubts. And now we're back to the scene of the Pomni keychain poster. Bubble pin! <laughs> and this Pomni pin! And we can't forget about this! <laughs> we were shown two initial versions, which are very different from the final version. I think there were many more scenes like this, because what we are shown is just the tip of the iceberg of the whole process of creating a digital circus. Now let's talk about the process of creating 3D animation. Let's take a look at the scene in which Pomni, Kane, and Bubble participated. We think that it is not difficult to create such an animation, but just look at how much effort it takes to get Pomni to open his mouth correctly. On top of that, you have to animate the head and body movements correctly, and Bubble has to come out of Pomni's mouth. And then there's the endless attempts to find the best shot. You as a viewer do not know this moment, but I as a content creator can safely say that sometimes for 2-3 seconds of video can take 20 attempts and about 30 minutes. Let me remind you of another fragment from the trailer of the new episode. That how that normally works? Shut up! I have so much to show you! <laughs> In the process of creating this scene, I noticed how detailed the writers are about even small details, like hand movements. In fact, it is such nuances that distinguish a really high quality and successful project from the various garbage created in one day. Well, besides the head, a very important aspect of Kane's movements is the movement of his head. And it seems that even the smallest details, such as the contour of the gum, are not too important. But our creators try to bring even such things to perfection. And to be honest, they do it very well. Well, the final scene itself was also brought to the best condition. Remember how I said that almost all of the scenes involving Jax have Kevin Temmer in them? Let me tell you a little more about that and start our story with the most difficult scene of the pilot episode. I'm talking about a little fight between Zubal and Jax. You might ask me, what's so hard about that? But take a closer look at Jax's head at that moment. Gooseworks themselves said it took over two weeks just to do that scene. In addition to her, Kevin Temmer and many other animators were involved in the creation of this scene. This is how it turned out when several animators worked together, but as far as I know, Gooseworks did not like the variant with the disappearing head, and it was decided to redo this scene a little bit, which is the final result you see on the screen now. However, Zubel's movements didn't change at all. Well, that concludes our really amazing and interesting video. I hope you enjoyed my review of all the deleted and secret scenes of the so-called trailer of the new episode. I wish you success and good luck, and see you soon in new videos.